Are you signed in or she signed in? Or are you signed in as Greg Edwards Racing? Yeah. Greg screwing up the camera. Right. First screwing up the video. She can't go into this one without being Ashley. Uh, okay. Yeah. Don't matter. You might can like go under you, you can. and like it, like his. I promise I won't call you Ashley. Uh -huh. <laughs> it says when you go through a chat, I want you to be a real person, not a fictitious person. That's why you gotta we gotta change that Facebook from being anything with you. Okay. Yes, I keep saying that. She don't like it. <laughs> we can do that before you can be an administrator. You, you can be an administrator. That, yeah, that's what I'm the that one. Yeah, yeah, do him as prime and then be an administrator. Yeah. You know. Heck no, I'm not giving her my password once I figure it out. <laughs> well, <laughs> well that, see, that's the key. Once you figure it out. Mm -hmm. The only reason I have a MySpace and a Facebook is because of my daughter. MySpace still exists? Yes. She still goes on. I'd like to welcome everybody to Let's Talk Racing. We've just sort of been chit-chatting and trying to get Greg on the Facebook page here. Anyway, we got Matt Mullins and Greg Edwards with us tonight. We forgot two things. What? Lights. I can do that while you are talking. And shade. Yeah, you're gonna love this. Hmm. Thought it was hot in that race car. <laughs> That's another. I'm, we're gonna talk about that too. Heat in the race car. Have you started using the cool suit yet? Yeah. Yeah. yeah How do you like it? Oh, I love it. It's nice. I mean, a lot of these races is probably not needed, but um, you know, after we ran the ASA series and those couple races, I really got hot in. I mean, I had to go to the hospital after Pensacola, and it was just. You know, it was about 103 degrees down there. The race is at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It was a 400-lap race. It was just, I had no cooling. I didn't have helmet cooling. I didn't have anything. We had, you know, a five-ply suit with underwear underneath of it and a, a black race car. It just, it wore me out. I mean, I was, uh, I was in the hospital for a while after that one. So we started, you know, looking into it more and talking to a lot of people. And uh, we actually found out that when you do keep your body cooler, your brain will work a lot better at the end of a race and you really don't think that you're getting fatigued you know and you're hot and a lot of people are like well you know i can handle the heat well actually if you're staying cooler you know and i can run a couple hundred fast and you just because i'm cooler and i'm not worried about the heat then uh then it's an advantage so. Make, makes a difference it makes a huge difference and i i see danny wears it i don't get down that far to see you mm -hmm. that often but but i know danny wears his and yep. us, us real old men really need it yeah and you know we wear it and uh you know, the way they got the systems now, we had a system on the ASA car. Mainly, I just like, you know, on one of our cars, we have the system like the Cup cars have. It's electronic air conditioning that blows cold air in your helmet. And I really like that. But uh, it's a little bit pricey and a little bit heavy. Units we have now are, are bag units. They fit behind the seat or, you know, beside the seat. So they're really not affecting the race car at all, as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, you know, if they keep me cooler, then uh, I can perform a little better at the end of a race. I think it's... Uh, it's a couple extra it. pounds doesn't hurt. You know, I mean, it's a, <coughs> you know, you can. I have been in races where I've got so hot that I felt like I was leaving quite a bit out there on the table. And if, uh, you know, if a restart with 20 to go and I'm feeling better than the guy in front of me, then uh, I feel like I got a chance. To time, time to go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it, for all you listeners out there, Greg Edwards, 97 and 06 champion. We've got that figured out. Langley Speedway champion. You've got wins all over the place too. I mean, Southampton, Southside, South Boston. No, South I never Boston. Won at South Side. I mean, we ran up front at South Side, but I was I was really early in my career when South Side was running, and uh, you know we ran up front there, ran well there, but I just never got a win. But you know we've had a you know a lot of wins at Langley. I I think it's over a hundred wins at Langley now, and uh, you know wins all over the you know several racetracks. We've had a lot of fun on the late models. Yeah. 
tried to move up, went to the ASA, and I, I talked to your brother about this too. You guys had tried the nationwide. Well, I'm sorry, Bush Grand National back then. Mm -hmm. You both tried it, came back down, did some ASA racing. That kind of got a little, I don't know if it kind of priced itself out of there, and you all came back home. Well, the ASA wasn't a bad deal. We were we were really competitive there for, you know, we were going against some million-dollar teams and, you know, Butch Miller and some of the top guys in ASA. Johnny Sauter at the time was in there. Uh, Kevin Swinsky, Mike Garvey, a lot of great, you know, great short track experts. And they, they came through that series. I mean, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, so much experience came through there. It was a great series. It was going in the right direction. The series we wanted to be in, we felt like um, – we had ASA working on our side, trying to find his sponsors. We had a lot of people that wanted us there. Um, Bob Dillner was doing his best to to get it, keep us in the series, and it was looking good. And then uh, there was a change in ownership in that series, and things just started happening. And uh, the ratings were doing real well, and and NASCAR kind of stepped in. I think the ratings might have been doing a little too well. It went to speed, and uh, you know NASCAR didn't think they uh, they didn't want the competition as much, so they made them you know play the races at two o'clock in the morning on Wednesdays or something. And that kind of hurt ratings, and uh, they lost some major sponsorship. And finally, the series pretty much folded up the, of how we knew it, and uh, it left us with a lot of equipment, a lot of cars that we couldn't do anything with. So uh, that was a bad deal because the series was neat. They had they had fuel injected crate motors way before anybody thought about it. They worked great. I mean. You could run them three seasons without ever touching it. You know, your your motor maintenance was gone. You know, they had a, a lot of neat rules, a lot of real neat tracks you got to go to. Um, you know, pit stops. To me, it was the best touring series going. You know, besides anything NASCAR, it was the best thing by far that I've ever seen. And I, yeah. I, I wish it would have kept going because it was a, a great series and, a, you know, so much talent came out of that series. Yeah. Well, Adam Petty was running in it, and it's just like you said, Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace and Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Johnson, mm -hmm. and you know the list goes on and on and on. So, hated to see that one go. Even when they were V6s, that was a, a really good class. Yeah, I mean, you just look at the look at the talent in that series. There was just superstars all over. You know, Mike Eddy and Butch Miller, and you know. Rick Beebe, um, oh, yeah, yeah, and on and on and on. Mike Skinner came out of it, didn't he? I believe so. I mean, I believe I know he ran some in it. I mean, there's been a, you know, like I said, Rusty Wallace was in there. Just, you know, Mark Martin was a was a big part of that. Big deal, part of that know? whole deal. So, yeah, um, I don't know. It was just a really neat series, and and getting to be a part of it, um, it was it was a lot of fun. I wish we could, wish we could go back and do it. If I was going to race a touring series, that was one of the the neatest ones to race because it was a you know just a lot of talent i mean when you go up racing against mike eddie i mean they they said he's won two thousand races or something you yeah. know he's tough man that yeah. guy is awesome he'll teach you some lessons on the racetrack yeah so, uh, it's a uh, it's neat to watch a big old guy get in a car and just whip everybody's butt you know so it's a uh, it's yeah. pretty awesome and 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 you haven't heard it after the asa was gone you haven't heard of, of Mike Eddy anymore. You know, you very rarely hear anything mentioned about him. Bob Seneca, that was yeah. another one. Oh, yeah. that, that was a big name. A lot of great. I mean, there's just there's a huge list of people. Daryl Waltrip. I mean, there's just yeah. a lot of people that that came out of that series. That uh, I mean, that's that was a short track specialist series. That's what that track that yep. series is all about. Was short track racing, and uh, you yeah, know, I had a fun some, time. With and it. they had some fun tracks that y'all went oh, on yeah. too. It was awesome. I mean, you got you know Salem and. You know, we got to go to St. Louis, and uh, that was a really fun track for me. I mean, we got to shift, and, you know, Madison, Wisconsin, that was a, another really neat track yeah. that I liked. So, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of cool tracks in the Midwest, and a lot of really <laughs> – there is some short track gurus in the Midwest. I yes. mean, I, I tell you, you know, I'm used to running late models. There are some guys that are just awesome out there. I mean, David Stremme, he's from, he was from there. Um, Matt Kenseth, he was he was doing Wisconsin that, so. boy, yeah. yeah. A lot of these Wisconsin. Yeah, he did guys. ASA, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. any thoughts? I, I, you've been in James Long's car now. This is your second year, mm -hmm. and it, it's actually going really well with yeah. you and James. Um, to. Top contender every single week. Mm -hmm. um, had a couple of issues, but nothing major this year. Yeah. And but last year, second in points, four points. Separation? Well, it was like 20 some, but I mean, I really feel like we gave that championship away to see. Um, we had two motor failures and a flat tire, and he didn't have anything, you know, any any major failures. So I feel like 
you know, if he could throw them out, you know, I was running second in the Hampton Heat, and we we had a problem with a radiator fan, cut a hole in the radiator, didn't know it ever heated motor, you know, and uh, stuck a valve. So we finished dead last in the Hampton Heat, and we still kept it within 20 some 20 points of them at the end. You know, we had two engine failures, and uh, and to still stay that tight with him, I felt like we just gave it away. You know, yeah. and it wasn't of our doing. I can't can't get on anybody, but it was just bad circumstances. So. You know, this year we're we're trying to keep performing and, and, and see he's performing too. So it's my guess it's gonna come down to the same thing. You know, somebody's gonna falter somewhere and uh that'll probably be the championship. You got yeah it's not only you and, and, and C E you guys have been dominant this year, but I mean your brother has picked up. Uh, I know he had some issues, and now he's picked them back up. Mm -hmm. um, Wesley is looking strong. Mark seems to be coming on. Paul You've got really Paul the Bolt is is really tough out there. Um, who was the Dean Shifflett? He's come on, yeah. Since he bought the car from James Long, he's he's been right there. So he's been, he's been right there. So you have got some stiff competition. It's just not CE out there anymore. <laughs> well, for the last three weeks, I was telling everybody this is the tightest field I've ever seen in late models. Two weeks ago, from second to fifth was two thousandths of a second. Yeah. From second to fifth. I mean, that's tighter than any Martinsville field I've ever seen. And, and this week, from first to fifth was less than a, you know, less than a tenth. So it's just a, such qualifying is so tight right now. And the cars are so equal, you know, if you even just <laughs> breathe wrong and qualifying, you're going to be out of the top five. You're going to be out of the top five, mm -hmm. yeah. Which is a good thing. I mean, it, they've been, the, and, and I'm not cutting down the, the late models or anything, but last year it was a little bit boring. UNC, and, and it seemed like whoever got out front and got that clean air was going to walk away good. with it. You know, this year, not so much. I mean, we're seeing you and CE and Dean and, and everybody's. You, you guys are right there. There's a lot, and there's a lot of passing for the lead this year. I mean, I, I've noticed that. And, you know, some races. I know me and CE passed for leads several times or run side by side. Like this week, we ran side by side for, it seemed like longer than it was, but we ran side by side a lot and, uh, you know, just putting on a good show. I don't know. I don't know. My cell phone's ringing. I better... <laughs> but, yeah, the, uh, it's just been tight competition. And, you know, Langley is so fat, flat and so fast that it's more aero-sensitive aero than most any tracks you go to. I mean, South Boston, we don't have the problem. Motor Mile's not a problem. Any Anywhere else, Myrtle Beach, it's really not, it's the bank can hold you up. And Langley, if you can get out front in clean air and, and get a guy at least two car lengths behind you, I mean, you're gone. But, you know, like Saturday night, if I've already got a loose race car and, and somebody gets right up on your bumper, oh, you're in trouble. Because, I mean, he gets all the air off your spooler and you're about to wreck. And yeah. it, it tightens him up, and he's he's really fast. So, you know, it makes for a lot of cool racing because it makes the crossover move work real well. You know, if somebody gets by you, if you can tuck in right back behind him, it'll tighten you back up and it'll free him up. And next thing you know, you're, you're doing you're the going same. You're right, going so right behind him. It, it makes for cool racing. Yeah. Um, He does Bring this to us every now and then. I just keep talking. I told her she's going to be listening. Oh, okay. Is this Sarah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got Greg on here, Sarah, and we're going to get to you in a second. So hold, hold tight here for a minute. Yeah, sure. Um, you can put your two cents in, though. Yeah, jump in if you feel like it. Okay. Okay. Um, we were just talking about it outside. Six points out. Is he beatable? Oh, See? yeah. Of course. Of course. Like I said, I think we had him beat last year, and, and it was our own failures. So, oh, yeah, there's nobody unbeatable. I, mean, I feel like that uh, as hard as our team is working, that, that I don't see a problem with him. I mean, we gained two on him this week. We'll gain If we can gain two on him, you know, it's just, it's just going to be really tight. I mean, I don't know. That's all I can say is we're going to give it everything we've got. I, uh, I've got confidence in my team. I've got confidence in my owner. I've got confidence in my – my motor man, you know, this car just, I love this race car I'm driving now. Um, and I, I just got full confidence we can we can do it. And this is the time of year that, that I like to start digging in deep is the summertime when it's grueling. And, uh, you know, if we can put together a run of, of, of two or three wins in a row or, or real quick win some, I think we'll be right, right back where we need to be. Any thoughts on... Go and and it just popped into my head. Any thoughts of going touring again? 
Have you, have you thought about that? I would in the right circumstances. I don't think I would do it on my own again. Um, if somebody, another owner wants to do it and wants to help, you know, pay the bills, I'd be glad to do it. Um, I like touring because I like, I like going to different tracks. I like the challenge of different tracks. So, uh, yeah, I would love to do it if the circumstances were right. But, I mean, for now, I like, I like doing a little bit of touring around. I'll start going to South Boston um, after the Hampton Heat. We want to concentrate up to there, and we get our, our secondary car ready to go. And uh, we'll start heading South Boston to uh, see if we can get as high up as we can in state and national points. So you're going for that, too. You're looking at that, too. Yes, definitely. I mean, we don't have the, the amount of races in nearly that, that some of these guys have, but our, our average – finish right now per you know per race and average points per race is right up there with the top three or four in the nation so uh you know we need to get some races in and make sure we uh keep good car counts at langley if we keep get enough wins at langley with good enough car counts you know i don't see any reason why we can't finish pretty high up there but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get some races going now yeah uh, are we are we doing the martinsville again we, oh yeah, we, we had we oh, had some, not, We're not going to have the issue. That we we're we're not going to have issues this year. No. It was a good thing. It really was. Don't yeah. don't get me wrong. It was a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, do yeah. what? They'll get their clock because yeah, it's safe. It's safe. They're going to get their clock this year. Yeah, you're going to get your. You don't have one, do you? Neither no. you or Danny has the clock yet. No, I've uh. I've led that race with 15 to go, leading by half a straightaway, and the car broke. I mean, that just so many things has happened to me yeah. there. You know, running second and, you know, getting a wreck on the two laps to go. Just, we've run so well there so many times, but that place is just, man, that place is tough for me. I mean, it's, I love racing at it, but that place, you know, maybe after this thing that happened last year, they, maybe I've, uh, I've done enough, and uh, karma will turn around. And karma help me will out. turn around, and, so. and good luck will come your way. We definitely got a, a great setup and a great car for there. I felt like we had the car to win that race last year. I felt like we were the only car that could run with Philip Morris, and, and I feel like I was actually quite a bit better than him on longer runs. Um, man, I was so looking forward to racing that race, but uh, you know, Martinsville will still be there. So we it, to, it'll we still be there. It'll, 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 you got you got a couple more years. You're young enough. You can you, yeah. you'll still get it. Um, you know, and that brings up a good point. You go to Martinsville, you got the Hampton Heat coming up, and we're probably going to have quite a few drivers come in from different areas. How do you feel about them coming into your home turf? I love it. I mean, I love it. Usually it's me. You know, a lot of drivers don't like to come to Langley a lot, so uh, we're always having to, you know, go and chase them down and go run with them. But uh, I love it because, uh, you know, I think Langley's a challenge for a lot of drivers from out of town. And for somebody like me, it's a... Uh, you know, I could probably do it with my eyes closed. I've been there so long, you know, it's it's not a challenge. And it's even hard for me to understand why it is because it's been so long since my first couple times of racing there. Yeah. But uh, it is different for a lot of guys that are on typically banked racetracks. This place is really fast, really flat, um, and it's uh, it's challenging for a lot of people. I mean, some people have come here and picked it right up, and uh, some haven't. So I enjoy having them come down. Yeah. We had Peyton, was it Peyton Sellers mm -hmm. and Matt – Browning, was it was, was that his name? Yeah, I think so. You remember? They yeah. seem to pick it up fairly quick. I was kind of yeah. surprised. Well, I mean, Peyton's been around. I mean, he's a very experienced driver. He's, yeah. he's driven a lot, so yeah, they picked it up. I mean, I've seen Philip Morris come here and run well. Um, it's been a while since I've really seen somebody just come in here and win. I mean, back in the day, Charlie Ford would do it. Mark McFarlane came here and ran good. Yeah. So uh, there's uh, the, a few of them. The three car out of. Up by South Boston. Um, now I can't even think of his name. Um, he used to run with us all the time. Mid nineties, had the three car. I, I, I'm drawing a blank right now. I, I can't know. even think of it. But he used to come down and run with us, and he mm -hmm. always ran very well. Yeah. Uh, no, several. I mean, Eddie Johnson's always. I don't even consider Eddie Johnson as. Is I consider him just as much a local as anybody because he's won a championship here. I mean. He ran really well, you know, and still will, you know, when he comes down. Yeah, still runs really well. Mm -hmm. um, Grubs would come down. They oh, always yeah. ran very well when they mm -hmm. came down here. Yep. So, um, plans this year, win the championship. Um, and that's not going to be an easy road. We know that. Um, uh, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Everybody would be doing it. If it was easy, it. you wouldn't appreciate it. So. Um, 
James Long has gone through some different drivers, and I'm, I'm going to bring this up a little bit, and it always seems like it's a year, maybe two. You guys have really kind of clicked very well, and, and, you know, I've seen some of the activity with you all. You guys get along really good. Oh, yeah. I mean, James is a great guy. I mean, just, uh, you, I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to explain. He, he trusts me, and uh, he knows I'm not going to do anything that, you know, if he wants me to do it, I'll do it, you know, but I'm not going to waste anything. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to make that car go as fast as it can without wasting a whole lot of his money, you know, without spending, trying to spend too much. I mean, when we need something, we need it, you know, and I'm just going to tell him flat out we need this, James. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think he totally trusts me with everything he's got. He knows that, uh, you know, I'm not going to, you know, talk bad. But I'm not saying that anybody else did, but, uh, you know, James is just a, uh, you treat him with respect, he's going to treat you back with respect. Exactly. And, and I've totally found that about him. And uh, he's the type of guy that will give you the shirt off his back if uh, if you're his friend. So yeah. uh, we've got to be good friends. And, uh, you know, even with this racing deal, whatever happens with it, we're going to continue to be friends after this is over. So we're having a fun time. You know, James is winning races. I'm winning races. So I'm enjoying it. It, it makes it all good, doesn't it? Yeah. I know you got to get out of here because you all got to go get some dinner and stuff like that. And, and the, the baby here. <laughs> I was surprised you didn't name him Martinsville. Yeah, somebody said Martin, and somebody called wanted to call him TikTok because we lost <laughs> TikTok. the clock. But uh, you know, I don't know. It, 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 it's been amazing having him. He's uh, he's been a great baby. It was a really scary moment there in Martinsville, and yeah. uh, you know, had to stay down there in Winston Salem for a couple of weeks in ICU. But uh, like I said, it, it was it was so hard stepping away, and I was calling the guys at four o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I don't think I'm going to be racing. I don't know what y'all want to do, but I'm not going to be able to do it. You know, they're they're sending me to Winston Salem with this baby, and and she was in another hospital in Eden, North Carolina. So it was kind of a mess. And, uh, you know, the guys, James was great about it. He said, you know, no problem. That's more important. I mean, all the guys felt the same way. Uh, Martinsville's still going to be there, and uh, it was an amazing experience. You know, everything that happened with him. And your brother was willing to go down and, and take your place, wasn't he? Man, yeah. He he drove down there and uh, never practiced a car. Hadn't been to Martinsville in two years, I think. Never sat in my race car and jumped in it to qualify for Martinsville. I mean, that's uh, it's pretty amazing, you know, 100 and some guys there. And he still qualified like 26th. But James had made the deal. If we didn't make the top 20, he wanted to take the car home. And uh, we felt like the car was definitely capable of winning. I wish Danny would have got one practice because uh, we put Nick Smith in the car for the last practice and he got out. He was so excited. He didn't know what to do. He says the best car he's ever had. So. You know, yeah, uh, I know. I know. I'm, I'm finishing up with him. He's still got another whole half hour or time slot yet to go. Yeah. So are are you going to stick around? Let's talk. To, can you stick around a little bit? I can stick around a little bit, I guess. He's, this is just to get the racing news section. He's not scheduled to 730. Oh, okay. Well, so, we've Sarah, been having a great time. Him. I'd beat Matt if I were you. We have Sarah, and I, I hope I pronounce it right, Cornette Ching, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. And you're from the Great White North, correct? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I just turned 20 years old. I've been racing since I was 12, and this year we're running in touring series. So one's the ASA and one's the ARCA series up here in Canada, and we run all over British Columbia. And I take it these are kind of like late models? Yeah, late model cars. And ARCA, I should say, which is old cup cars. How you been doing up there? I've been doing really well. We have only raced uh, four races. And um, coming up this weekend, I'm going to be racing the car in a, like two different series. Same night. So I'm going to be running like 250 laps. And 250 laps in two different series? Yeah, there'll be a 130-lap race in the one series and a 100-lap race in the other one with heat races. And, uh, oh, yes. Cool. Now, where are you racing at? What are these tracks you're going to be racing at? Well, we race all over the province. Mainly the track that we race at, our home track, is Motoplex in Vernon, B.C. And then we travel... Even further north, so we run Prince George, Williams Lake, Quinnell, and Agassiz Speedways that are sort of all over the province, and we travel around a lot to get to the tracks because the tracks are pretty spread out. Have you come down to the States and run any? Um, I haven't had
had any races down there. We go down and watch, like, the Fall Classic and stuff in Yakima. And uh, that's something that I hope to run. But those cars are one class up from where we're running. They're super late models, and we're just a limited late model. Oh, okay. So you're a perimeter car type spec head? Yep, yep. Just like that. got to run. You can run, like, we, I have a victory circle. You can run how, clip, great rail stuff. How does he make a perimeter car? Does he still make a perimeter? Yeah, I think they'll make pretty much anything. Anything they you want. want, yeah. Well, that's true. We had a couple of ASA cars from from, from those Howe. guys. Yeah, and Chaz and those guys are, are great people. Yeah. Um, how long have you been in these limited lights? Um, I raced locally for the past two years, so I ran mainly at Motoplex Speedway, and this will be my first year in the traveling series. So a total of three years, and this is my first year running at different tracks and competing against a bunch of different people. How do you like running again? How do you like running this touring series? We we were actually just talking about touring series. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's a really big challenge running on different tracks. I mean, like, I've only ever run two tracks, even in my street stock and my other cars. So going to all these brand new tracks is a challenge, but I think we've been doing pretty well. We haven't smashed up the car too much, so... See, boy, you, I just threw me for a loop. I'm just, I'm lost here. Um, what's your, um, you, you're running this ASA and you're running this ARCA. W what kind of, what do you want to do next? Um, well, right now I'm in the Race 101 program down in North Carolina. So it'd be really neat if we could win that and uh, run down in the States for a year. And my next goal is to need to run the series that I'm running and get a ride in the Canadian Tire NASCAR series for a few events for next year. That would be pretty cool. And Race 101, and now we know about it down here, and, and you know now that we know it is up there, what do you think of that program? It's been a really great program. Um, the traveling down there has been fun. It's a long trip, but it's cool to experience a different culture and meet all the different people down there. And the program itself has been really informative as well. Tony Blanchard, he knows this stuff. So we've been getting schooling from him and, and doing our PR stuff with Adam and Anna Marie. So it's all been really exciting. It, it is a big culture shock coming from Canada up north where you're at, up by Washington, down to North Carolina. It, it's pretty big culture shock, isn't it? Yeah. The biggest thing I noticed is all the waffle houses and all the fried chicken places. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what's what's popular up in Canada that, that would be equal to what we've got down here? Um, I'm not really sure. Just hockey, I think. Hockey's everywhere. Like, if you go into the restaurants, they've got hockey memorabilia everywhere, sort of like what you guys have with the racing stuff. Hockey's not a bad sport. You ever been to a hockey game? Oh, yeah. They're actually pretty good. I enjoy hockey. I enjoy watching the fights. Yeah, so. I, that's what I go <laughs> for. <laughs> yeah, hockey's not anywhere near as exciting as racing, though, unfortunately. Well, it depends on the night. <laughs> We've had some good hockey. I, I, first hockey game I ever went to was the Admirals, mm -hmm. and it was against Richmond. And this was ECHL days, and the puck never hit the ground from the drop-off, <laughs> and they were fighting. And yeah, I enjoy. I enjoyed that. So, um, Sarah, what's you know you're talking about the Canadian American Tour and and. Are, are we looking to come into Cup and Nationwide and trucks and all that? That would be eventually the goal, absolutely. I'm just taking small steps to get there and uh, trying to do everything I can up here in Canada before I make the move down south. But the, the move's coming, huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> When's your next time you're going to be down in Carolina? Um, I haven't actually scheduled the time yet, but going to be the end of July to test the super late model uh, the, in the house car for race 101. So that should be fairly exciting. Going to Hickory or Concord? Hickory, yeah. We'll be at Hickory. Well, that'll be cool. There's another little kid that, that runs here at Langley that's uh, race 101, and that's uh, Anthony Perez. Yeah, Anthony. He told yeah. me about this radio show. He's a good kid. 
yeah, he's a pretty good kid, and, and if we could get him calm in a race car, he'd be all right. <laughs> so, But that is a good program, and I'm glad to hear you're involved in it, and, and I'm wishing you the best of luck in it. Um, if you use it right, you'll go far. Yeah, I'm just trying to make as many contacts as I can and use everything that we're learning to make my car faster and progress my career. So. Has it helped make your car faster? Yeah, well, we've been trying to run some different setups Tony's been giving us a hand with, and, yeah, the car's pretty quick. Um, I haven't got it nailed down for a win yet, but hopefully this weekend. Well, we're going to wish you the best of luck. I, I know this is long distance for you, so I'm not going to keep you on here any longer, but you need to plug your sponsors and family and all that. Yeah, I just want to thank Aaron's and Roy Clissel, Snap on Tools, Bill Smythe, AJ Automotive, uh, B&L, and... Uh, I just want to say that I have a Facebook page, Sarah Cornichang Racing, that anyone can check out, and my website, sbcracing.com as well. Cool. Well, we'll have to go check that out. Sarah Cornette Racing, right? Sarah Cornette Ching. Sarah Cornette Ching Racing, and that's on Facebook. And what was your website? sbcracing.com. sbcracing.com. We'll have to go check that out. Yeah, thank you. Go get that first win and come back on the show with us. That sounds great. Thanks for having me on today. All right, Sarah. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye. Now, this is the fun part. Did it. <laughs> I never. I can never do that right. Um, <coughs> ASA, there it comes again. Mm -hmm. So, do you think that will ever take back off into a touring series? I don't know. They're doing a little bit now. I mean, I don't know. If it's exactly what they like it was before, but uh, there are some pretty neat touring series. I mean, a ASA still exists. They're, they've changed the way they their structure is now a little bit, but uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, there's some other good series going on out there. I mean, the past series seems like a pretty neat series to me. You know, uh, you know the the other series, the NASCAR E series, seems like it's, it's a pretty neat series. But you know. That's kind of getting dollared up by the uh, by the cup teams and diversity teams. You know the cup guys bringing in their new projects, so they're they're throwing a lot of money at that. So it's kind of hard to go in there, you know, and run with them. I feel like we could, but uh, you know I don't know. I mean the past series seems pretty neat. I mean, but you know the late models are are just fun. I mean the late models we drive and it, it's nice. My shop's less than a quarter mile from the racetrack. You know we're right there. I. I when we get up to leave for the racetrack, we we load up and we're there in two minutes. So yeah. it's yeah, you know, it makes it nice. You know, a lot of guys are loading up from the racetrack and they got an hour or two hour drive. You know, we're home unloaded and I'm sitting in my you know, my living room watching TV within and, the and, hour yeah, of leaving. So yeah, that's that's kind of nice. You know, and that, that's what makes it so hard to drive by Langley and all this to to go somewhere else. But uh, you know, South Boston's a track we definitely are going to probably have to go run about five or six races at this year before it's over. And uh, I enjoy running there. I wish it was a, uh, you know, I wish it was a little bit closer, but it, it's not that bad. Three hour drive. It's not a. It's, it's, it's not, not that bad. bad. No. And it is a fun track. It is a fun track to run. Oh, definitely, definitely. Definitely yeah, not a Langley Speedway. <clears throat> it's just different. I mean, it's, it's <coughs> you know, it's pretty much three eighths mile short track racing. You know, that's that's uh, you know, all of them are a little bit different, but it's you know, it's all the same. It's short track racing. It's short it's track fun. racing. <laughs> Motor mile in in store this year? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe uh, it's. Uh, I don't know that w what would make us have a reason to want to go there other than just going and having fun. You know, to race right. there. I mean, south between South Boston and Langley, we can get enough points in for our national deal. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's what we're mainly going to concentrate on right now. We're just wanting to concentrate on this Langley deal because. Uh, it's going to be a dog fight. I mean, to the end, I just I totally feel like that, and uh, it's going to come down to the last race. Probably come down to the last lap of the last race. But uh, we're less than halfway through it, so you know we're just Keep we're digging. really digging right now, yeah. and we're making sure these cars. You know, every time I make mine faster, and it, I don't want to keep saying CE, but it's like he keeps doing it. Every time I feel like I, I've got back on top again. They go back and do their homework, and they pop up on top. So, I mean. There's another name we forgot about, and he's back now, Doug Gotze. Yeah. And and Doug's ran very well there at times, and, and it, you know, I see an improvement every race, and I mm -hmm. think him and Phil are taking off. He's going to be another one you're going to have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
He, Doug's going to be tough. If they get him fast, boy, watch out. It's going to be exciting. It's good, it's <laughs> it's good, gonna it's good to be exciting. And it yeah. seems like that every week he does get better. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's got, to me, one of the best in the business ever in late model stock cars, you know, working on his car. And, I mean, I've got so much respect for Phil Warren. It's unreal. I've raced so hard with him. And, uh, you know, I know he's going to get the program the way it needs to be. You know, Doug's not. The money's not going to be an object for Doug. He's going to get what he needs to get to go fast, and uh, I think Phil will will put him in the right direction. And he'll, you know, he's running well now, and it just seems like they're a little inconsistent. I don't know if they're trying a lot of different setups right now, but you know, he'll qualify in the top five one week, and then he's you know, he's seventh, eighth, or tenth the next week. So I, you know, I don't know what's going on there. I think they're doing a lot of uh, a lot of you know, testing. chasing stuff around yeah. and testing stuff. But uh, yeah, they'll definitely be good when it's all done with. Yeah, and and like you said, Dean, that's another one that... Yeah, that, Dean's right there on the edge of winning the race, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, he bought that car that last year, the last race, Nick Smith won with that car. And yeah. it was it was kind of going to be our third backup car, and it might even moved up the ladder if we realized how fast it was. And then <laughs> Dean totaled his car, and it was sitting at James's house in his shop, and uh, James sold it to him. He gave him a heck of a deal on it because he wanted to see, you know, it's Dean back in racing. And, man, Dean just basically bolted what a couple of things that need to be bolted together on it and came out there and he was he was running fast right out the box fast so. right right out right out of the bat yeah um we talked a little bit about it and i've had your brother on the show danny and the brotherly two brothers running the same division sometimes that doesn't always work out well and i know you guys but you guys actually run very well together and you won't give each other an inch no, I mean, we're tough with each other, but we don't want to tear the cars up. We've had a couple of instances, not very many of you know, this long career, but, uh, you know, we do share a lot of information, and we do learn a lot from each other because, you know, he's one of the best chassis men I know. And I, I, I share anything with him. It's an open notebook. He can come look at anything I've got on my car, and he does pretty much the same with me. So uh, it actually helps us more than it hurts us. You know, we've always, especially when we were running for, it was just totally Edwards Motorsports. I mean, my dad just wanted us to finish one, two, if possible. Don't tear the cars up. You know, yeah. just don't wreck them. You know, not, not. Intentional. And, you know, or, or don't be stupid. If you're running first and second, bring it home. Let's take the money home. Don't go wrecking when you're running first and second, you know. Right. But uh, we we finished first and second, you know, a lot of times. It's a, It's been fun racing with him. It's a, he's one heck of a competitor. He's uh, he's tough, and uh, he's taught me a whole lot throughout my career. He got into racing, and you followed in his footsteps just a couple years after. Right? Basically, I mean, it was a few. I was pretty young when he first got into it. It was like a, I think it was called All American back then. It was a yeah. series. It was a neighbor of ours that had a car and asked if he wanted to drive it, and he said yes. And at the time, me and him both were racing motocross, and we were traveling all around the state and uh, racing motocross and I think uh, and we saw a bunch of bad accidents and people really get hurt bad in the motocross deal and uh, my mom was kind of just getting to the point with that and he started racing you know the the cars out there that they decided they wanted me on four wheels so they, they put me in a in a go-kart and uh, that just as soon as I jumped in that that just it just seemed like the right thing I mean we just dominated the go-karts pretty much I think we won all but about five races I ever raced a go-kart, you know, for three seasons. So we, we really ran well there. And then uh, as soon as I turned 16, he had already moved up the ranks through Grand Stock and into uh, late models. And they got me a Grand Stock car. And uh, it was on from there. It was it was a wild time. I raced against a lot of a lot of tough competitors back then, you know, Dale Lemons and, you know, a lot of Mitch Sarvis. A lot of guys are really good in that series. I jumped right up there and had to run with them. And, uh we ran good, ran well, uh, won our first year, and ran, did that for a few years, and then moved into the late models and, and rolled on. You, you've almost been through all the, I think you've probably been through it more than, than Danny has, but you've been through all the big sponsors, and you've been the one-man team and all that. Does money make that big? Uh, I, mean, I mean, would you rather be sitting there with enough just to run the season, or would you rather be sitting there with a million dollars? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Does it? Yeah, you know? I mean, and I'm gonna tell you the honest truth. It just depends on if you know how to spend it. Because I see a lot of teams out here with a big budgets that are spending it in all the wrong directions. 
and I, I don't see it helping them. I see they're trying to buy speed sometimes. They try to you know go over here, go over here, go over here. You stick with you. You get an engine man you trust. You believe in. You stick with him. You get a chassis builder you trust. You believe in. You stick with him. You don't you know every time somebody wins a race you don't jump over and buy another motor, buy another car. Is you know the people that winning comes from effort. Winning comes from in the shop. You know spending the hard days, knowing knowing how to you know feel out the race car you have and know how to get it set up. So you know I mean it's nice having the money, um, but I don't need a three or four hundred thousand dollar hauler to take my car to the racetrack. You know I'm not concerned with that. I want good looking clean equipment. And when I need something, I need it. But I'm not a big one for uh, buying a bunch of stuff that's unnecessary and. Right. Uh, you know, when I buy it, I want it. It's going to be because it's going to make me go faster, and I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to make sure it is. If not, we'll make it ourselves, or you know, we'll figure it out. But uh, no, we probably spend a lot less money than a lot of people think. But the stuff we do have is the best you can get. Yeah, I try to make sure of that. You know, and uh, but I don't bounce around just just throwing money fist over hand just for uh, you know, just because I hear somebody's got this or somebody's got that because. Uh, you can blow a lot of money and you really end up slowing yourself down because when you start doing that, you're not working on your race car on the direction and the, and the thing you needed, you know, and uh, that's just how I've always approached it. I've, I've always tried to do it with less than, than most people and I, I just try not to waste anything. I don't, I don't, I don't like blowing money for no reason, you know. Yeah. So. You see that a lot, a lot of times you'll see somebody that's, that's not 100% and he's trying to buy that. Mm-hmm that speed and it happens more times than not i think it's just people that don't understand it i mean i've been around it enough i know what it takes to win and um you just don't buy it i mean it, you don't buy what it takes it's commitment and hard work and uh you know talent of the team talent of the driver talent of the engine guy you know and you, you just you find things you trust and you find ways that you know how to do it i don't care if somebody else tells me a different way of how to set up my car i know what it takes to win I know, right. you know so you know just like in in life and anything else i'm sure in other sports other things people want to see monkey see monkey do and, and chase everything you know chase stuff down and it's uh typically what i've found in racing you keep to your game plan you do what you think's right which you know makes you win races and you just uh avoid worrying about uh the newest, Nate, latest, greatest thing, and uh, you know I gotta have this chassis, I gotta have this motor. No, you don't. You can, you just keep good, good stuff underneath of you, and you can win with it. Races are one in the shop. Most definitely, most yep. definitely. And, and you and Danny have always kind of exemplified that. You guys are probably the hardest working. I don't remember a night, Danny, not being at the shop during race season. And I know you're there almost every night too. My guys are there right now, and. Uh, <laughs> We've had, you know, even for having a pretty good season, we've had to work a lot because we ended up wrecking one car in practice. We've had some issues with some with one of our motors, and we didn't, weren't sure what it was. So my guys have been in the shop four straight weeks um, without a day off, you know. So it's kind of hard on them to ask them, you know, to go to work all day long, then show up in the shop when it's 97 degrees and, and work on it till 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, you know. But that's how committed they are. Yeah. And, uh Man, that's what it takes, and it, it's awesome to have a bunch of guys like that. You know, John McMaster's my crew chief, and Dave Jones, they're the mainly ones there all the time. Uh, we had, you know, a couple of guys, Phil Goodwin and, um, and Nate, but they've ended up going to night shift, so now they'll come in during the day. They'll do a few things in the daytime, so that, that makes it help. So we've got a good program going on right now. It's working out. Uh, yeah. I keep telling the guys, you got to get out of the shop something. You're going to burn yourself out, and that's what scares me. But uh, they're working hard, and uh, – man i just hope we can keep this deal going i hope we can step it up just that niche it seems like like i said every time i get a little faster and see he picks it up so we need to find a do a little more testing get back on top again and, and uh be number see one what can happen. yeah i mean we won last night last week and the problem is the cards are almost exactly equal and uh it's about track position and, and you know playing air games so we need to, we need to step up just a little bit. I don't like it being equal. I want to be a little Another bit. Another five or ten horsepower to give it just a little bit of edge. That's right. Hey, hey, have you found? It? Okay, I got Brett on. Yep, Brett. Brett, we're gonna to get to you in one second. Okay. Because even I think Greg might even contest. This man had an excellent run at Langley Speedway. The double mm -hmm. zero. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. 
So we're going to talk a little bit about that. W with the late models, and you, always, you, you keep bringing back the arrow, have you gotten to the point where you see the air? I, I know you can't, but, but do you understand it? You can definitely feel it. Um, I felt it Saturday night when C got behind me. I mean, I was, I was loose before he got there, and then when he tucked up underneath my spoiler, it was, <laughs> it's hard to hang on to. And, you know, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, I totally understand it. I know it's going on, and, I mean, it, and it's like you're chasing somebody down. They're four car lengths ahead of you, and you're good and free. And you can see they're good and free. You know, they're loose. If you can get to them, all you need to do is get within a car length, and your car tightens right up, and then you can see them saw on the wheel. I mean, they're just they're just struggling. It gets the air off your nose, so your your car tightens up a little bit, and it gets the air off their rear spoiler, and, and they were already loose. Now they're about to wreck. And uh, <laughs> you know, and I, bad thing about Saturday night, I was hoping that I could get down right behind CE when he did pass me the second race, but Danny had filled the hole in, so I had to fight back by Danny, and he got about four or five car lengths on him on me. And then it just stayed there the rest of the race. So, I mean, the cars are just so Couldn't equal. That's the in. problem. I mean, it just we're almost the cars. If you go on my laps, we almost run lap for lap for lap every single lap of the race. So, I helped out uh, Rick Godovic, and when you guys were running seventeen nines, eighteen O's during that race, sixteen nines, seventeen O's, sixteen nines, seventeen O's. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. It's like your grandson. Yeah. He was back in fifteenth, sixteenth. Mm -hmm. Running 17 O's, 17 ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how tight that field was, and it was like you all just got spread out. And yeah, you still had passing going on, just like you said. Mm -hmm. But that whole field was just that well, tight. Uh, you know, thinking about it, this year, we just haven't lapped that many cars, so it's amazing. You have a 20 some car field, and you're not lapping a lot of cars. So that means there's a lot of people really running well. Yeah, um, and so. Uh, it's really it's a lot of tough competition. Like I said, just go down qualifying and, and look at the numbers. It's it looks like you're at Martinsville. I mean, it's that yeah. tight, and yeah. it's a, it's kind of amazing. And and you got twenty, twenty two cars. I, I mean, you know, eighteen, twenty, twenty two. I know you guys have used some field fillers to to help that with the national points, but mm -hmm. really not that much, and not really needed. A lot of times we haven't needed it, but um, like for all the twin races, I like to have my secondary car there yeah because uh you just never know what's going to happen in the first race and it's nice that i got a, a fast backup to jump in and start in the rear field if i yeah, need to i've talked to Dan, i've talked to john a couple of times he's like we don't know which one to run yeah 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 that, and that's got to be a good feeling yeah it is good i mean uh right now our secondary car is not where it was i mean we've got it updated with some new stuff that we have on our, our primary car we've only got to test it one time so uh we will get that going a little better. Uh, we'll probably get testing this week with that thing because uh, we'll be starting. That'll be the car we'll be taking to to South Boston more than likely. More than likely. Mm -hmm. um, Let's go ahead and break the bread and then we we'll get back to the well, I, I, he want, Do you want to stick around? Are you good? You're going to go eat with us. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's already said they're going to eat. Okay. okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Brett Moffitt. Driver of the Double Zero, Michael Waltrip Racing, and I believe he had Aaron's on there too, right? Brett? Hello? Brett? Okay, we don't have it. We're going to go back to Danny then. Call him back. <laughs> um, <coughs> well, let's go through your sponsors real quick. James Long, of course, mm -hmm. is one of your sponsors. Uh, American... Well, American Steel is, is not on the car anymore. American Steel, matter of fact, has closed down. He closed down American Steel okay. uh, this year. So uh, it's uh, Brower's Mechanical, and uh, it's Craig Brower at Bacosan's Heating and Air Conditioning. I mean, he's he's really come on board as a as a primary sponsor. Um, of course, Danny's Glass is a is a big part of of our team. Um, Fair Distributing, uh, Tom Snacks, they they help us out. They take care of a lot of stuff for us. Um, We've got a, a couple more that we're going to be announcing this week, um, so uh, I can't say anything right now. But we do have a a new sponsor coming on this week, so that'll be a uh, for the uh, Hampton Heat. So that'll be a, a neat deal to announce. Uh, Race Wrap and Tamco Paints, um, they help us out on some stuff. So uh, that's about it. You know, we've uh, I've just been really happy since James has come on here and has really helped me out. I mean, we still do it out of my shop, and it's just all of his equipment and. Uh, Man, he's he's been super supportive of me, and uh, you know I just hope he thinks I'm doing him a good job. 
Well, you have been. I mean, you you've already gotten to quite a few wins this year, and got more. You had quite a few last year, six, eight, six, six or seven, a seven, I believe. Seven. Mm -hmm. And you you're pushing a hundred wins. Yeah, I think we're over a hundred by now. I'm pretty Ooh, sure of it. Getting up to Lubno's area. <laughs> Lubno and I think Roger Sawyer were. Roger was the 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 leading late model winner out there for the longest time. I would have to think Phil would have to be, but I mean Danny's won a lot of races. I don't know. I've never really gone down and counted them all, but I know just just doing the math and how long we've been doing it. I'm pretty sure you're, it's you're pretty ready, sure. Ready to get yeah. him so yeah. in and out. Well, maybe we will. You there? Hello, Brett? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear us now? Yep, I got you now. <laughs> okay. We had we had that all tell thing going on for a minute here. Brett Moffat, it's double zero, Michael Walter Brayson, and you had Aaron's on the car, right? Yeah, we did. So finished second, almost won that doggone thing. You were two laps down too, weren't you? Yeah, um, you know, I really kind of felt bad. Um, you know, we had the dominant car all day, and uh, we ended up cutting the left front tire down on lap two of the race and got ourselves two laps down. And we finally got back on the lead lap with about 37 laps to go and um, restarted about 20th, and then we drove our way all the way up to second. Um, you know, we definitely had the car to beat, though, but um, just a little bad luck caught us. Um, I, I know it, but tell our viewers a little bit about you. You're an Iowa boy. You've been racing dirt. Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, I um, mean, you know, I started racing go karts. Um, I raced those for about three years all around the Midwest. I moved up to racing dirt modifieds in Iowa, and uh, you know, we ran about 80 nights in one season. So we were averaging four or five nights a week, and um, you know, that was a lot of fun in my career and um, helped me to gain a lot of car control. And um, it was, it's it's just made for a good season, and then we went up to ASA Late Models, and then after that I moved up to the Camping World East Series with Amy Santer Motorsports, and then last year I was with Gibbs, and now I'm here at Mike Walter Racing. And having a good time, aren't you? A uh, very good time. You know, it's been going really good, and uh, every day it's something new, so that makes it very enjoyable. <laughs> what did you think of our little Langley Speedway? Um, you know, I loved it. It was made for good racing, and, um, you know, it was a lot of fun. It was great passing and you know i think the fans really enjoyed the race so i think we put on a pretty good show for them well that you did it, it's not often and i got greg edwards sitting here a, a track champion it's not often you can make it three wide at langley speedway um it's not often definitely but uh you know we were doing what we had to do to get the car back to the front and um you know luckily it paid off and paid off well coming back to second place that was a pretty tough field yeah, you know, it definitely was. There was a lot of competition, and once we got behind there, I got kind of worried. But uh, finally, when we got our second lap back, we knew we had a really fast car and that it was time to go. But, um, you know, we were pretty amazed that we were able to drive all the way back to second place. Well, I think even the fans were amazed. What's in store for Brett Moffat here shortly? You got some things going on? Um, yeah, we got a lot going on. Um, you know, we're getting... Right now we're, we have to get four cars ready to go to New Hampshire here on the 15th. We have, uh, you know, my primary and backup car, and then also Travis Pastrana is running that race, so we have to do a primary and a backup car for him as well. So we're really working hard on getting those all put together right now and getting those set up and ready to go, and, um, you know, we're just pretty busy at the shop doing all that. Are, are you are you one of them shop rats, or are you one that goes down and works in the shop all the time? Um, yeah, I am. You know, I, I show up at seven o'clock every morning, and um, you know, I got to be there till roughly about eleven thirty, and then I go work out, and um, you know, I'll be in the gym for about an hour or so, and then I get to head home for the day. So um, I am there every day and working on the cars. Cool. Uh, any cup, any nationwide or trucks in the future for you? Um, really, you know, right now it all depends on sponsorship. We're working hard at, at getting some, but. Um, as long as we can get that, we have the opportunities to do it. But, um, you know, as everyone in the racing world knows right now, sponsorship is very hard to get. And so uh, we're just working hard and putting all our effort towards that right now. Cool. You got anything you want to add in? Jump on no, in, Greg. Sounds like you're doing a really fine job. <laughs> well, that, you know, hey, we, I actually have something in common with Brett. And, and uh, you remember our conversation, don't you? 
Yeah, I do. Yep. We went to the same middle school in Iowa, in Des Moines. Oh, really? Yep. Cool. So about 25 years difference, 30 years difference, <laughs> but same one. Um, yeah, I was definitely a little surprised to find that out. And I, well, I didn't know. And when you said Grimes, I was like, Johnston Middle School. Yay. So um, a little boy from Iowa coming out and running for Michael Walter Brayson. How did that all come about? Um, you know, we, we started with Andy Santer in the East Series. Um, and that was actually Kyle Bush's dad. Um, when we were racing late models against him, told us that we need to get down here in the big car and get some experience with that. And, um, you know, get in a car with truck arms and start learning how to drive one of those cars. So we started there with Andy Santer. And, um, you know, at the same time, we were talking, um, trying to get in with Gibbs, um, cause we know they had an excellent East program. And so, um, after my first season, they liked my performance and, um, you know, they said they have a spot open for me. So we went over to there and then, um, you know, all season long, um, we ran good and we ran up front and, um, you know, then we talked to Michael Walter Racing at the end of last year and, um, you know, things just worked out to where Ryan Truex was going up into the Nationwide Series and, um, they wanted to keep their East team going but didn't know who was going to drive it. So, um, you know, everything just kind of worked out that, um, I'd be able to get behind the wheel of that car. Well, that would be pretty cool. Um, Loudon is next. Give us a little bit of your schedule here. Um, and I'm trying to think of what was after Loudon. You've got some pretty big races coming up. Yeah, we got Loudon coming up. Um, you know, that's a big one. Then we got Columbus, Ohio. And then, um, you know, later on we go back to Loudon and we go to Dover. Um, so, you know, there's, there's definitely some big tracks coming up. And, uh, you know, that's where. I personally like to run on um, the bigger, faster tracks. And then, uh, you know, last year, Ryan Truex in my car now um, won both the Loudon races last year. So pretty excited to go back to there and have a good car and, um, you know, hopefully run up front. Have you found a favorite track yet? Uh, You know, Dover is a ton of fun to me. Um, So I love Dover and also the Iowa Speedway. Um, just because that's my hometown, and, um, you know, it was really cool to be able to win there this year, so that was awesome. I've heard I've heard very good things about it. I have not been there yet. I have been by there. I know exactly where it is. I remember when it was a farm. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a phenomenal racetrack. It's seven-eighths of a mile, really fast and really smooth, and it just makes for really good racing. And you won there this year. And they're going back next year, too, again, right? Yep. Um, you know, luckily enough, that was, that was awesome to be able to win there in front of my hometown. And um, I look forward to hopefully going back there next year and racing. I, I got a trivia for you. Who was the very first person to win a race at Iowa Speedway? Uh, you know. Oh, geez. I don't know about that. Um, I know the first East race was Joey Logano. It be Woody Howard, right? It was Woody Howard in... in uh, uh, it was Hooters Pro Cup at the time. Mm-hmm. One of our late model guys down here won the very first race down there in a Hooters Pro Cup, Woody Howard. That's awesome. So He works with Caitlin, by the way. Caitlin. Shop. Oh, really? She I, does his PR stuff. Oh, okay. Give us a rundown of your sponsors. We're going to get on out of here. It's 8 o'clock. Greg's sitting here saying, I'm hungry. And I know he's got a little one-year-old, or almost one-year-old back there saying he's hungry. <laughs> he so, gets fed differently. <laughs> we need to plug your sponsors and everybody, and, and we'll get you out of here, Brett. Um, yeah, you know, I just got to thank Mike Walter Racing for giving me this opportunity. Um, you know, it's amazing what they do and um, how hard they work at it. You know, this is this is the East Series, and that's, that's small on what they're used to between Nationwide and Cup, but, um, you know, for them to put that much effort into our series and to give us the equipment that they do is just phenomenal. So I just got to thank everyone there and with Aaron's and Napa. It's their, their support is unreal what they're doing at Michael Walter Racing. So a uh, big hats off to them and thanks to them. And your parents, don't forget your parents. <laughs> I, none of this would be possible without them. You know, my dad and mom have both made huge sacrifices to getting me where I am. And, um, you know, it's amazing what they've gone through to get me there. But um, you know, we're all enjoying it and trying to make the most out of it. Listen, good luck at New Hampshire. Give us a call when you get back. Let us know how you did. 
I hope to be hearing that you won it. Uh, I'm hoping that too, but thanks for having me on tonight, and I look forward to talking to you guys again. All right, man. We'll be talking to you. All right, Brent. Okay, I'm going to plug two things. You're going to plug two things, I'm going actually? I'm plug for two things. Hampton Heat, the ninth, right? Mm hmm. Yep. The ninth, Hampton Heat, 250. 200. 200. Yep. I was trying to get that extra 50. <laughs> Um, and, and that's that's become a very big tradition, and it sounds like it's really taken off. Yeah, and um, you know I've got a lot of pressure for that one because James has won all those races but one. You know, see, you snuck in there and got it last year. Yep. We, we we had a motor problem, but uh, somebody in James's car has won that race pretty much you know every other year, but one year CE won it. So uh, man, he wants to get his one of his cars back to Victory Lane, so some, some kind of bad. And, uh, I just we're really working hard. I mean, you, you got to believe me. At least two weeks every day, we've got a a schedule of events, things we're doing to to get that car just a little bit better. And uh, you know, we're going to be on the chassis dyno next week. We've got several different things to try on the car. We're going to go to the t the track and test after that. And um, we got a several different things. We've got ideas for the car we're going to try out. So hopefully, one of them hits it, and uh, we can get that car just a teeny bit better and put us. You know, so we're not just equal with him. We're uh, a little better. A little bit better. And then uh, then you have to worry about somebody else because Danny's just stepping back into the picture. He struggled a little bit, and now he's fast again. So uh, Paul DeBolt, I think he's just he's right on the verge of winning, and, and uh, Dean Shefflett. So there's there's going to be a, a lot of cars there. I think Woody Howard's running this race again this week you know, oh, for that race. Uh, he'll run, be running one of Paul's cars, one of the Fords. So, man, it... it it could be a strategy race. I believe it's going to be. It's not going to be a sprint race like we've been doing these twin 50s. You're going to have to play it smart. You're going to have to ride. You're going to have to know when to go. And uh, you know, and really with this cone, it brings a whole other aspect into it because you can ride, and you can just take the cone and drive back up to the front. So yeah. there's uh, a do you, do you like strategy. the cone? <laughs> I don't know. He, I mean, I, on the fence I, about I, it, huh? I, I'm on the if fence he's with it. Third, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I've gotten to the point where I, I kind of almost liked the restarts last year, just double us up. But um, you know, it's self policing. The cone is just self policing. I mean, every time I was second, I took the outside. Only reason is I don't want somebody fifth or sixth jumping up on the on the outside and cut down in front of you, and it just it causes issues. It causes issues. So it's self policing. You know. You just got to jump up there. If you're second, you need to take it. If you're third, you daggone sure need to take it if a second place guy doesn't because, uh, you know, you're going to end up fifth. That's the, kind of the way I looked at it, third and back. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we were only in that position once last year. Yeah. You well, know, I, I take but, it. I mean, CE took it every time when he was second. I took it every time when I was second this week. And um, basically the way I look at it is, is if you go back to every restart we looked at last year in – at about 80% of the time, the second place car gets in a line second. Yep. So I'm not going to take an 80% chance of if I'm second, you know, end up starting third, and there's an 80% chance I'm going to end up losing a position. Yep. So, you know, we're all big boys. We can handle the outside. You, you got to take can it. handle it. Yep. So, um, Fourth of July, Friday night, Langley Speedway fireworks, 50 lap modified, Grand Stock, Super Street, and Legends, I believe. Yep. Okay. Thomas Stinson, Friday night, Caraway Speedway. Third in points, there is a write-up on NASCAR home tracks with Thomas. i got to plug him. If not, he'll kill me. Um, he's going to be there. He's going to run. The last time he was there, it was second. Did he's they run on Friday? third in points. No, they don't run till Loudon. No, I mean, they're coming to run late model Friday. The late models aren't running Friday. Oh, that's right. Modifieds. Modifieds and Grand Stocks, please. And Grand Stocks. He's third in points. He's only 104 points out of first. A local guy. Mm -hmm. So I got to plug him a little bit. Um, and there's a great there's a great little write-up on him. The soul of NASCAR. Thomas right there in front. You're welcome. Let's get out of here. I'm hungry. Don't know who's going to be on next week. <laughs> we'll just talk to you next week. I'd like to thank everybody for watching Let's Talk Racing tonight. We'll see you next week. See ya!